Pour bien comprendre la In order to understand why biomass derived fuels are important, we need to think about the world energy situation, especially if we look at the breakdown of, of final energy consumption in 2012. The first area that uses up energy are houses, shops, trade. Next, we have the industrial sector. In third position, transportation. Every year, energy consumption increases in a stable way. And in 20 years from now, if we consider the uh, average uh, consumption rise, for instance, oil plus 1.3 percent per year, we find that the final consumption in 2035 will have increased by 34 percent. And for transportation, which is in third position, in 2035, transportation will use up 4,200 million tons of oil equivalent, i.e. the equivalent of oil, all the oil produced in 2012. So we see the impact of uh, consumption increase. Regarding more specifically transportation, renewable energies, the existing ones uh, and also the ones being developed, they do not meet the needs of transportation. They do not generate a sufficient quantity of uh, primary energy, liquid fuel, needed for transportation. Nowadays, oil accounts for 96% of the energy uh, used in transportation. 63.7% of uh, all the energy consumed across the world is used up by transport. Biofuels derived from the biomass, can they possibly replace oil in the long term? Here we have the history of uh, biofuel. Bioethanol is the most famous one. And the Brazilians have made it uh, very famous. And biofuel has been used uh, in uh, Brazil in 1931. There were trials with uh, sugarcane derived alcohol. Now the situation is obviously different. The world produces 85 billion liters of uh, bioethanol to be uh, used uh, in combustion engines. You probably have heard that in Brazil, in 2003, we have flex fuel vehicles, uh, and now all car manufacturers uh, across the world make cars that can actually use uh, petrol and bioethanol. The same goes for vegetal oil and biodiesel that are derived from uh, plants, oil lamps were discovered that dated 9,000 years before Christ, and even Rudolf Diesel, who invented the diesel engine, tested vegetal plant oils as early as 1900 in his prototype engine. So the use of uh, plant oil has been known for some time. Now, biodiesel oils from uh, chemical reactions are produced across the world. 5 to 10 percent of biodiesel oils are introduced in the diesel oil being used uh, for engines. In diesel oil, 5 or 10 percent are biodiesel fuels coming from uh, rapeseed, for instance. Back to existing biofuels, can they actually replace oil on the planet? If we make a relatively simple projection, Palm oil, which is the first oil used for, by the food industry, if we took all of it to use it for transportation, the quantity of oil could only be sufficient for seven days. And if we took all plant oils across the world, all kinds, coconut, rapeseed, uh, or sunflower, to make biodiesel oil, the world's transport 
qui est pas mal, mais euh, ce qui est loin de répondre euh, au remplacement. Means would only run for 21 days, not bad, but far from being enough. Brazilian ethanol could uh, be sufficient for two days and three hours. And if we took all of our, the alcohol produced across the world, we drink, no, we don't drink a drop of alcohol, we only could uh, drive Donc, our buses and cars for six days and 17 hours. So no, biofuels cannot replace oil in the planet. Their substitution potential is only about 10%, according to calculations. Hence the need to find other sources of uh, renewable biofuels. Other types of biofuels are being developed, second generation biofuels. The first generation being the ones that I have just en fait, described. Again, here the idea is to produce bioethanol and euh, biodiesel oil, de, but not de from de food crops, de, but de from um, bois, agriculture, paille, residues, straw, or fast growing hedges, uh, from where molecules can be derived. And from these molecules, uh, biofuels could be uh, manufactured. Their potential is about 25%. In summary, the first generation bioethanol, biodiesel oil have a 10% substitution potential to replace oil across the planet. And second generation biofuels, which are currently, currently being developed, have a substitution potential of about 25%. So we still have to find the remaining 65%. We have to find other sources If we wanted to, our transportation, means of transportation, be totally oil independent on the planet and possibly before 2020 or at the latest 2030. Because according to the uh, Increase figures, uh, we need to do this before 2030. What about the future? Well, we obviously work on uh, energy efficiency, including in the field of biofuels. And also we work on how to recover energy from waste, from byproducts, what can be used to make biofuels. And more and more laboratories are working on this. I'll provide a few examples. For instance, uh, frying oil, use frying oil, which can be used to produce biodiesel oil. And even individually, people are making trials or on the semi-industrial level. There are other options, micro algae, which uh, are very promising and carry lots of hopes. But unfortunately, we're not there yet. But bio algae, uh, micro algae could be a, a possible candidate to replace uh, oil and make uh, biomass derived biofuels. The microalgae can be grown in an oriented way in order to produce either lipids or sugars. And then the microalgae are collected, processed, and they release oil or sugars, depending on the type of production, which in turn can be turned into biodiesel oil or bioethanol. More recently, new ways have been explored to find new sources, for instance, the use of uh, linear cellulosic matter, straw, wood, or other such like residues, in order to produce fine powders, which could be used to replace uh, gas or biofuel, liquid biofuel or gas biofuel. Proof of the concept was established in 2010, and there are laboratories working on the best way to develop these uh, powders to replace oil-derived fuels.